Hey, good morning everybody. It's Clint with CCUA back with another veg out video. Today we are going to be doing some plant labels. Uh, so if you're anything like me, a lot of the times you just don't label your plants. But sometimes, especially if you're interplanting or doing companion planting or have a really big garden, uh, you can kind of forget what goes where. So I get kind of tired of using old paint stirs with Sharpies as my markers. They don't look very good. They fall apart after one season. Um, so today we are going to be painting a couple longer lasting plant markers. Uh, so I've got two materials we're using here today. I've got this big old brick that we're going to be using. And then a piece that busted off one of my ceramic pots at home. I thought both of these looked like they could make pretty good plant markers. So we're going to see what we can do. Now, forewarning, all of my paintbrushes have disappeared. Every single one. So we're going to get creative. We're going to use some natural paint paintbrushes here. These are the flower, except that they're not bloomed yet. But these are the flower of... Uh, plantain. Not sure which type of plantain. So we're going to use these as our natural paint brushes today. Not totally sure how these are going to work, but we're going to find out together. Now you could paint this whole thing white for a background if you wanted to. It might make it a little <clears throat> easier to read. Um, but I think I kind of like the natural brick facing. And that's what I'm going to use. And we are going to use an orange to start us off on this one. This is just um, quick dry matte acrylic paint. Color is pumpkin orange, which seems appropriate. I've got some pumpkins growing over in our outdoor classroom, so that is probably where this will end up. Whenever you're working with paints, always make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. And always make sure you have something underneath what you're working on. We don't want to make a huge mess while we're doing a project, right? All right, let's try out these weird paint brushes. It looks like it's gonna work. It might just take a bit more patience. One letter. Kind of wonder if this is how people used to feel whenever they wrote anything down, having to use like a, a quill and an inkwell and constantly re dipping it. We may make a may abbreviate pumpkin here because I'm not totally sure if I'm gonna have enough space to write the whole thing. Skip the next letter P. It's rigid too. We're just gonna get a nice abbreviation pumpkin.
And there we have it. Now, that says pumpkin for sure, uh, but it's still kind of boring, you know, it's just, just one word. So I wonder, maybe we can get some green, some spring green, or maybe some uh, green velveteen. We can add a few little green decorations on this plant marker. Yeah, you can see my paint's a little old here. We'll grab ourselves a new paintbrush here. And we'll just put some little decorations on it. leaves here in the corners. Well, you can see our green and orange are starting to mix together a little bit over here. Kind of curious what sort of color that'll make. up here at the top right. There's some of our leaves, some better than others, but that's all right. It's kind of how painting works sometimes. And then we're just going to add a few. Just a few lines, just to give it a little bit more excitement. And a little bit more pop. And there we go. There is one plant marker down. Pumpkins. <laughs> so we're definitely going to want to let that dry for a little bit before we put it out anywhere. So we're just going to set this to the side. And then, just as a fun experiment, I'm kind of curious what happens when we mix this green and orange together over here. What color we get end up getting. Well, we get a nice little swirl, that's for sure. Looks like brown. <laughs> I got a little bit of paint on me there too. 
Well, we got our pumpkin. Let's go ahead and do a quick one on our uh, ceramic here. We'll see how this does as a painting surface. Let's see. I kind of like this this red color here. We'll do this one for beets. Beets will be fun. Well, maybe. This one might be... Oh, there it comes. Slowly but surely. Well, that might be all we get out of it. Let's see if I can unclog it. A little bit more. That should get us through this anyway. This paintbrush is just a bit too long. Start out kind of like the pumpkin. Yeah. One letter down. I think we might run into the same problem though. This is a problem I run into often. Anytime I do any sort of art and craft that involves letters. I always make them too big and then run out of space for all the letters. Measuring can help you fix that though. If you find that you're doing that too, you can measure out what you're writing on. Figure out how long it is, how many letters you've got. So beats has five. This is probably about five inches long, so you'd want each letter to be about one inch. Probably could have started further to the left. That's all right. We'll just make some really short E's here. Luckily, this is just for our garden, so we're not trying to impress anybody with our art skills. Beat. Got some beats. And then, you know, maybe we'll do a, uh, just a couple little beet greens. go. I will say, these plantain flowers, they're not the worst paintbrush in the world, but they're definitely not as easy as a real paintbrush. So there's that. And let's see if we can just sneak a little bit of red right in there.
Not too bad. There we are. Now we have a beat label. So, with just some random yard junk and a little bit of paint, we now have two brand new paint labels that will hopefully last us for quite a while. Well, thanks for joining us today, everybody. If you end up making some nice painted plant labels at home, we'd love to see what you come up with. You can drop those in a comment or message us. We'd love to see what y'all are doing at home. Um, but that is all we've got for you today. We will see you all again tomorrow morning. Thanks.